Hello folks, I'm Mr. Hartzler and I want to show you today how to make what you see on the screen there. This is going to be a cam and this is a pear shaped cam. So I'm going to start by hitting file and new. This small screen here will pop up and I'm going to hit standard and then create. And then from there I've got a blank canvas. I hit start a new sketch and I'm going to work on my XY plane. So I click that plane. And I'm working off a little set of dimensions right here. So just so you know what I'm basing my numbers off of. And I'm going to start off with a circle. I like starting these at the origin. So I hover over the center until it turns, for me it's green. And I go out until I have a quarter inch diameter. So I'm gonna type in 0 0.25, press enter. And then I need a larger circle past that. So I'm gonna, again, to start at my origin, and I'm gonna come out, and this one, it tells me that it's a 1.25 radius. There's a big R in front of that dimension. So I'm going to multiply that by 2 because the inventor wants my diameter. And now I need to scroll out. So I'm going to use the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom out a little bit. But this is still just a circle, and I'm looking for a cam that is pear-shaped. So what I need to... Oh, I zoomed the wrong way. There we go. Now I can see both circles. Next thing I need to do is put another circle a little bit higher up. So I'm going to start just straight up from my origin. And this one has a radius of 0 0.25, which means it has a diameter of 0.5. Or I can multiply that by a 2. I can take my radius, multiply by 2, write in Inventor. I don't have to actually do that math anywhere else. Then I have to tell this how high up to be. Because that is closer to pear shape, but not an actual pear yet. So I'm going to click the center of my top circle in the center of my bottom circle. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing there. Let's click dimension. Click on that top center circle and the origin. I'm going to come over to the right. I want this number to be 1.25. So I type that in and press enter. That pulls that top circle down. And I already had mine centered over the origin, but if yours was not, you would click on the center of your origin, or sorry, the center of that top circle, then the, your origin and you would come down. But again, since mine already was centered, it won't even let me adjust that. The next thing I need to do is add some lines here. At first, I'm going to just put any generic line. I'm gonna start uh, just right on the, my top circle there. As long as I'm touching that circle, I'm fine, but really it needs to just be close. And then I'm gonna come down and click on it somewhere on my bigger circle. I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just hoping for something close. And we're even more pear-shaped now. But I need to be a little bit more exact. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make those two lines equal to each other. So I'm going to press Escape on my keyboard so that I'm no longer drawing lines. Up in the top, there's a little section under the Sketch tab that says Constrain. And in the bottom right of that box, it looks like an equal sign. If I hover over it, it even says equal. So I'm going to click on that. Then I'm going to click on both of those lines. You'll notice it adjusted ever so slightly, and that makes those two lines the same length. But I'm a little bit closer, but not done yet. I now need to make it so that those lines would only touch each circle exactly one time, and that is it. So I'm going to go again to my constraints, and I'm going to click Tangent. Tangent is a looks like a circle with a blue line on it. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on my, in this case, my left line first. And then I'm going to click on that circle, that little one up at the top. It again, adjusted ever so slightly. And then I'm gonna click on that same line again, and I'm gonna click on my bigger circle. And you'll notice it moved even more. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna click that line I made, and that small circle. Again, it shifted. I'm gonna click on that line, and I'm gonna click on my big circle. And that one won't actually let me do it because everything is already constrained and in the right spots now. Now what I need to do is extrude this. So I'm going to click 3D model and extrude. I'm going to zoom out so it'll see what we're doing here. And I'm going to click, it actually won't let me click both of those pieces yet. So what we're going to have to do, I'm hoping that that little almost triangle shape there also gets extruded. And since it's not letting me, it's only letting me pick one of those two circles, I'm going to have to trim some things in there. So I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to go back to my sketch tab. Up in the top, towards the center, you'll notice a trim. It looks like a pair of scissors. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click on all of these extra pieces that are inside of my pear shape. As I click on all of those, 
Thank you. I can um, I can delete those that way, and it will now let me extrude this. So now I'm going to press the E on my keyboard as a shortcut, and it will let me extrude this whole thing out. But that's too far. I don't want to extrude an inch. I want to extrude a quarter inch. I hit OK, and if I look at it from the front, you'll notice it looks like a pear. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a great day, and uh, make sure you keep building stuff carefully and with enthusiasm.